This is my first video on my module on reference angles. So we're just going to start by defining what we mean in trig when we hear uh, the phrase reference angle. Okay. So take a look up here on the top left. We say a reference angle. This is also sometimes called a related angle. For any angle theta in standard position is the positive acute angle between the terminal side of theta and the x axis. Okay. So I know that sounds like a whole lot of information, but really what I want to do is I just want to kind of sketch what we mean by this. So we say, look, we have some angle, we're calling it theta, and it's in standard position, which means it's positive or initial ray leads from the positive x-axis. And let's say it terminated over here in the second quadrant. So we'd say we have the initial ray, the terminal ray. This just says that given any angle in standard position, then we say the uh, the reference angle or related angle is the positive, okay, it's positive, acute, okay, it's acute, angle between the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. So if I were to say switch colors over here to like a, like a reddish, yeah, there we go. Um, we'd say here's the terminal side, here's the x-axis right here, the whole x-axis, mind you. We say it is the positive acute angle formed between this terminal side and the x-axis. So that could be, it could be this angle over here, or it could be, say, this double arced angle over here. Uh, well, it's got to be this double arced angle over here. And the reason why is because it's positive, of course, we just classify as positive, but it's acute. Okay, so uh, reference angle is just kind of a fancy way of saying, look, any angle you give me, if you were to drop, uh, drop from the terminal ray back to the x-axis, that would be the reference angle. So for example, if I had some angle down here in the fourth quadrant, we say some angle in standard position, here's my angle. We'd say here's the terminal ray right here, here's the x-axis, this is the acute angle between them. So we would label this theta, and we would label this theta party hat. Or we could say theta prime in some texts, but we're going to go with this theta party hat notation in my videos, okay? So theta party hat's just always the acute angle that gets formed between uh, the terminal arm of my angle originally and the x-axis, okay? And that's just the definition of what we call a reference angle. We're going to sketch some down here and make some notes on it just to make it more clear. But a few things. Uh, we say, first of all, in this definition, theta party hat here is always positive, okay? And always between 0 and 90 degrees. So uh, a reference angle is always an acute angle. We'll talk about why can't it be more than 90 degrees, okay? Uh, but using the definition of reference angles above, I say, let's just go ahead and sketch the following uh, angles down here and then give the reference angle. So on example A here, we'd say this is like A. That is an A. We need to sketch a 30 degree angle. So do this a little bit more slowly. That way I don't make it look really bad. We say, okay, so a 30 degree angle in standard position would look roughly like this. We say a 30 degree angle. And we say the reference angle, uh, if this is theta, and theta is 30 degrees here, 30 degrees, okay? We need to find the reference angle, and the reference angle is the acute angle formed between this terminal side and the x-axis. Well, you'll notice here that the acute angle formed between the x-axis and this terminal side right here is actually, is actually the same thing as the angle we started with. So in a case where my angle terminates in the first quadrant, we say the reference angle and the actual angle are really the same person. They're the same thing, okay? So what if we hop over into the second quadrant here, and I say sketching a 135. So example B, we'll sketch a 135 degree angle. I think the nice thing about reference angles is when you start to sketch things in, say, second, third, or fourth quadrant, if I said, well, how would you get to a 135? And, you know, we, we typically use these quadrantal angles to navigate. Like, I know it's somewhere between 180 and 90. As a matter of fact, 135 is perfectly half of half the distance between 90 and 180 in terms of rotation. Or we could say it's 45 past 90 or 45 short of 180. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, we say, here's my terminal ray. Here's my angle theta. We're going to label this. We say theta. And we know theta is 135 degrees. But we want the reference angle, and the reference angle is the acute angle formed between this terminal ray right here and the x-axis. So I just kind of just drop it back down to the x-axis here. We say this is, right here, this is theta prime, or theta party hat. And theta party hat, in this instance, is a positive 45 degrees. Remember, reference angles are always positive and always acute, but basically it's this 45 degree angle that we formed right here. Okay. Uh, how about letter C? We'll go down to the third quadrant. 240 degrees. 240 degrees. If I said, well, how would you get to a 240 in the first place? You know, I kind of, I kind of look at it this way. I'd go at least 180. Okay, and we say 270s right here. Uh, at least 180 plus another 60 degrees. If I had to sketch this, so we'd say a, a 180 degree rotation there, 
and then here's another 60 degrees. We say here's theta. This is our original theta. And so the whole angle here is 240 degrees of rotation. Well, we want the reference angle, and the reference angle is formed between this terminal ray, this terminal ray, and the x-axis. So now it'd be this angle right here. And we've already kind of discussed this angle, if you consider it, when I talked about how would I get there. So we say theta party hat, or the reference angle, to this 240 degree angle is 60 degrees. Okay, and one of our fun numbers we always pick on. You notice we've had reference angles of 30, 45, and 60. I'm picking on these on purpose. And we say this last one here, 330 degrees. If we terminate it in the third quadrant, excuse me, fourth quadrant. So 330 degrees, it's like 30 degrees short of 360. So we'd say like 270. We say 360, it's like 30 degrees short of 360, so a 330 degree angle would be like here. Okay, here's our original theta, so we say theta. The original angle is 330 degrees. We want the reference angle, and remember the reference angle is between the terminal ray and the x-axis. It'd be this angle right here. And so we'd say theta party hat is the reference angle for a 330 degree angle. And we'd say this is just simply 30 degrees. So a 330 degree angle has a reference angle of 30 degrees. So no matter what angles we're sketching from now on out, we typically always just refer back to the reference angle because it's, you know, if you consider this as a trig class, if I start dropping altitudes down to the x-axis, you can start to see how I'm forming right triangles all over the place, and that would be the angle I'd be concerned with in my right triangle. Okay, so up here in the top right, before we finish this video, uh, this is a general way we can express or find reference angles, but we say that theta is a positive angle between 0 and 360 as we've drawn on the left. Then we say in general we can find the reference angle just by looking at these kind of uh, cheat sheet things. But this really just says this. Number one says that well if theta is an element of quadrant one, that means if theta is in quadrant one, then theta prime, its reference angle, is the same thing as the reference angle. And if you look back over here at our first diagram, we said, well, we had an angle that terminated in the first quadrant. We had a 30 degree angle, and its reference angle was also 30 degrees, because that was the angle formed between the terminal arm and the x-axis. But when we hopped over to the second quadrant, now I'm saying I had a 135 degree angle, which had a reference angle of 45 degrees. But in general, how could we find this? Well, what we could have done was taking the entire 180 here, the entire 180, and subtracted off the original 135, and it would have left behind this, this 45 right here. So this is really what I'm illustrating here. I say if theta is in the, in the second quadrant, then to find theta prime, we could always just take 180 minus theta. And if theta is in the third quadrant, kind of like down here in example C, this was C, we said 240 degrees, we could have said, well, let's just, in order to find the reference angle, let's take that 240, the original theta, subtract off 180. So that'd be like saying, you know, take the whole 240 we sketched down here and subtract off this top 180 part, you're going to leave behind this part down here, which is what we wanted. And last but not least, if theta terminates in the fourth quadrant, we can take the entire 360 degree rotation like we did down here on D and subtract off our angle theta. In other words, if we took the whole rotation and subtracted off just this green part right here, the 330, you would have left behind this portion right here. So some people prefer to use this right here. I would always suggest just sketching in the angle. So that when somebody says, hey, you know, I've got a 300 and, you know, I don't know, 42 degree angle, you know, I say, sketch this in. Well, 342 I know is, is short of 360, and it's just this angle right here. We say, here's theta. Theta is 342 degrees. And I want to say, well, I want the reference angle, which is this uh, terminal ray and x-axis angle right here. We could say, well, just thinking about this, you know, it'd be like 360 minus 342. You'd have to, you'd have to find the leftover, but uh, but we'd say this would be about 18 degrees. About actually, it'd be exactly 18 degrees. So theta prime for a 342 degree angle would be 18 degrees. Uh, but recall that reference angles are always positive and they're always acute. Cheers.